To point out the fifth characteristic of money, I would like to touch on an error in terminology. If you pick up a newspaper and read the scientific discussions, you will find people talk about the money market, when the market they are referring to is a short-term loan market. The term money market is applied to a market in which present goods are exchanged for future goods, but in a short term, for example, up to three months. The commercial paper market, the market for government bonds up to one year, the market for what are considered short-term loans. But I ask you, from a scientific viewpoint, what is the true money market in which monetary units are bought and sold? Where is that market? Think about it. The entire goods and services market. That is the money market. As I explained before, in all transactions, in homes, food and suits for instance, simultaneously what is taking place is the purchase and sale of money. That is the money market. It is the market in which money is supplied and demanded and a price for money is determined. The price of money is its purchasing power what can be purchased with a monetary unit. That is the money market. And it is very important. Remember the individual determinants of price. Other things being equal, if the supply of potatoes rises, what happens to the price of potatoes? It tends to fall. Other things being equal, if the supply of money rises, what happens to the price of money? Its purchasing power tends to fall. If the purchasing power of money falls, that means the price of goods and services, in terms of monetary units, rises. Therefore, it is terribly misleading to refer to the money market if one wishes to talk about the short-term loan market, because in the loan market, the price that is determined is the interest rate, and the interest rate has nothing to do with the price of money. Nothing at all. The price of money is its purchasing power. And here lies what truly does disrupt society, as we will see right away. We have said that any volume of money fulfills its function optimally. Disruptions to society do occur when the quantity of money either increases or decreases by the processes we will study. That is why it is so important to distinguish, in scientific terms, between the money market, which is the entire goods and services market, where, through two-sided competition, and the subjective valuations of the marginal pairs, the price of the monetary unit, its purchasing power, is determined, and the short-term loan market, which is misnamed the money market, where the price that is determined is the interest rate. Finally, the sixth comment I wanted to make is a criticism of the clumsiest and most mechanistic version of the quantity theory of money. Economists who try to explain money in aggregate terms without applying the concept of marginal utility, seek to explain the connections between the quantity of money and a supposed general price level. To do so, they use this formula, called the equation of exchange, in which M represents the money supply, the quantity of money. P is a phantasmagoric general price level, like the surface of a swimming pool, which rises and falls. T stands for real transactions, which can be measured in different ways, but it makes no sense as a separate variable, because it means mixing apples and oranges. And V is the variable necessary to balance the equation. It is still called the velocity of circulation of money. What these theorists say is that if V, the velocity, and T, a real measure of transactions, are constant, then if the quantity of money doubles, the general price level doubles. It is a purely mechanistic connection between the quantity of money and the general price level. If the quantity of money doubles, the purchasing power of the monetary unit drops by half, which is the same as saying the general price level doubles. Well, even if we recognize that this equation of exchange contains a kernel of truth, in that it conveys to the least educated minds the idea that if the quantity of money increases, prices tend to rise, the equation is very harmful from an analytical point of view, because it describes a direct mechanistic relationship between the quantity of money and its purchasing power. 
and it conceals precisely what is most important, which is that money never reaches everyone equally, and that the processes by which its quantity increases or decreases do not so much affect the general price level, a supposed general price level, as completely distort the structure of relative prices, and with it the productive structure. These processes generate extremely serious problems in the allocation of resources and trigger economic cycles. Therefore, the equation of exchange is scientifically unsound and also very harmful because it obscures precisely the most important object of study from an analytical standpoint. The processes through which monetary injections distort, in relative terms, the market's price structure and the real allocation of resources in the market.